about 10 days ago I posted into some of the UK pouring groups about a Valspar Premium or V700 Base C alternative because the new formulation has actually stopped working for the Bloom Technique. So the product I posted about was this, the No Nonsense Trade Floor Varnish. That's what the can looks like. It's the clear gloss I use, not the satin. Um, and this, so this is the replacement for the Valspar. And I got a ton of questions about it. I'm presently preparing for 12 Christmas fairs. I'm really busy, so I thought this was maybe the best way to just try and answer everyone's questions. So that's the, effectively, that is your pouring medium. I've used this, which is the Good Home Soft Sheen Brilliant White from B&Q. Now, I've actually had this a couple of years, so I can't 100% guarantee that this formulation won't have changed and that if you got a new tub of this, whether or not it would still work, but the old stuff certainly does when I tested this before, and that's all I've got at the moment. So that's what I'm using for the pillow. And to just clear up something straight away, you don't mix any of these mediums with the pillow. So I just diluted this a bit, it's around 10% water added to it to just thin it down a bit. It's a little bit thick out of the straight out of the tub, and that's been left to sit for 24 hours to degas. Then the other thing I'm going to try today now, this would be a replacement for the so this is originally what was recommended in the Bloom course, which is the Joe Sonia gloss varnish is a polyurethane water-based varnish now I'm replacing that and I'm going to give this a go which Dawn Cowan in the Acrylic Pour UK group she kindly sent me a video of the consistency and it looks like the perfect consistency to use with this no-nonsense stuff the reason being that the no-nonsense is much thinner than the Valspar Trade C is and was. Really, I was kind of looking at a varnish, a polyurethane varnish, which was thicker to compensate for that slightly. So this is the one I'm gonna to try today. It's the Johnston's Trade Woodworks Durable Quick Dry Polyurethane Varnish. And again, it's the gloss version and I'm gonna see how that goes. And then my cell activator is just Aussie Floatrol mixed with, you know, whatever color Amsterdam paint. In this case, it's black. I eyeball everything. So this is approximately four parts Floatrol to one part paint, but you know, you might need to adjust that as you're going along and when you mix this with your colours or your pigment, again, very roughly, because it will vary depending on how thick your paint is that you're mixing it with, but very roughly, that's approximately three parts varnish to one part paint. And then I kind of usually <laughs> just add the varnish and I, and I just never measure it. So that is done to get the consistency that I want, because obviously everything needs to be the same consistency for a bloom, otherwise it's just not gonna work really. So I just add this to get the consistencies I want. Now in the past with the Valspar Base C, I never used to add water to anything because I found that for me, pigments would just start breaking down, I would get loads of flocculation, but I have tried adding water to some of my paints to thin it down a bit, as well as this. And I haven't had any issues yet, but I've been only been working on very small pieces. So, you know, you can try adding a bit of water if your mixes, your consistency is too thick. 
and I think that will be fine on small pieces but if you start getting issues as you scale up then really try and remove the water from the equation. So before I start mixing some of the colours I just wanted to show you the consistencies of things. Okay so before you start mixing anything give the can a good shake making sure the lid is on very very securely before you start doing that and give it a really good stir and let me just show you you can see how thin that is as i said earlier it is much thinner than the the valspar is and that will ex you know that does affect your your cells my experience with it was similar with acrylic paints that are thin consistency lots of cells but they weren't as stable as they would have been with the old Valspar they did kit you know they did um what am I trying to say they did hold together I'll actually show you I've got a tile that I did yeah so these are actually the dried version this was just using the no nonsense trade varnish so you can see that, you know, the cells did hold, but I, I would personally say that they weren't as stable as they would have been if I'd used the old Valspar. But that was the first time, that was the first time using this and testing it, and I didn't have any any varnish to thicken it up with so i'm hoping today that this bad boy will compensate for that a little okay it look, looks quite thin actually i was hoping the consistency would be a little bit thicker than that but that might be because i've not stirred it yeah okay it looks it does look slightly thicker than the floor varnish but perhaps not quite as thick as i would have liked anyway this is a bit of an experiment today so i'm just going to plow on and see what happens so this is a pigment this is actually boom gels or Boom Art Products Pearlescent Mica. But honestly, you know, again, pretty much any pigment is going to is gonna do. I've only selected four colours for this test because it, it is a test. Uh, I've got the Montmartre um, acrylic colour in their signature rain. This is orange-yellow. I've then got Pebio's Studio Acrylics DYNA in iridescent orange yellow and finally i'm going with the chrome acryl student acrylic and that is red oxide so i've got a, you know i've got a combination of some you know that's a semi-transparent definitely i don't think it says on here but that's probably an, an, an opaque obviously i've got the uh pigment and then that's kind of a metallic me metallically that's kind of a metallic colour. So, as I say, I've tried to cover all the different scenarios. Okay, so let's get on to actually mixing a couple of these up. With the pigments, and I should have said already, but, you know, really, you should be wearing a mask. I'm not because I'm recording a video, but, you know, certainly when you're using pigments and this sort of material as your mediums, then really a vapour and particle mask is the way to go so I'm just putting again you don't need you know that's plenty so that's going in my cup first and I'm wetting that with the Johnston's varnish okay not the not the no nonsense so you just want a small amount we just want to wet that, that pigment down. So you, you're aiming for a smooth paste. 
before you start adding anything else. You know, what you can do with your pigments if they are really runny is just beef them up a bit with some tube paint in a matching, matching colour. So that's the consistency at the moment of the pigment, which is a bit runny. So I may beef that up a bit with the colour before I actually start the pour. But I'll leave that to sit. Let's go, this is the Chromacryl Red Oxide. So again, as I say, I eyeball everything. One part to three parts. This is the no nonsense. Make sure these are all really, really well stirred. And that's already much thicker than that pigment is. So I'm going to have to adjust all of these. Um, this isn't going to be a comprehensive video. This is just to show you, yeah, a quick run through of, of how I use them all. So you can see how thick that is in comparison to that pigment. So I'm now going to take my Johnston's varnish and I'm going to thin that down a bit with that. still really really thick so let's actually use some water so that's now actually got a mix of the no nonsense and the Johnston's in it so I have you know I am trying that combination a drop of water the consistencies need to be pretty thick for the bloom technique so you don't want to be you know if they're too thin they're just going to sink into your pillow and you're not going to be able to get the effects you want just add a little bit more Johnston's varnish. Okay, that's not a million miles away. So I think I'm going to adjust these once I've done a test pour on a tile. Okay, so for the moment, because as I say, I will adjust these, but for the moment, that's how thick. That red oxide is. It's probably maybe still a little bit too thick, but as opposed to my pigment, which is much, much runnier. Okay, I think that's about there. So you can see it's just leaving, just leaving a trace. And I will adjust everything once I've done a... So I'm going to go ahead and mix these two up. The gold I will be using is the System 3. This is the rich gold hue and it's transparent. So I'm going to go ahead off camera, mix those three up. That will give me five colours in total. And then I'll come back and actually start. The... OK, I managed to knock all my paints over and so I've got very little paint left but I am running out of time drastically. So I'm just gonna get on and pour a canvas on camera so you can see what I'm doing. And that's gonna have to be it. At the moment, I'm not convinced that the Johnston's varnish is bringing anything to the party. But we'll see. So the good home pillow. Not enough on there so that when you spread it out, obviously it covers everything. I'm going to start with red oxide. I want to try and get away with just doing one, one bloom. So I'm laying a fair bit of that down. Following that with the gold. I've just literally got a dribble left now. Add the, this was the yellow orange. See, everything's covered in paint where I've just knocked it all over the table. I actually think I'm going to have the ducks in purple. Okay. 
and I'm going to finish with the fluorescent yellow because I'm just going to come in with the black CA. So my black CA, it's quite a lot of black CA, but let's see. Hopefully you can see that. So that's how it is, just post post the blow. Just spread that out a bit. I want that to come back into the middle. I can see some, some air bubbles coming through already. So that looks like it's moving fairly freely. So I'm going to spin that. I'm not going to modify this at the moment. So you can see exactly what's happening. So the cells seem to be holding holding up pretty well. You can see that. Obviously you want to get as much paint off as necessary to stop the whole thing from Sorry, I keep forgetting there's a camera there that I should be pointing at. Let me move back a little bit here. The pillow paint is pretty thick, so it's not moving that fast once I have got rid of quite a bit of that pillow. Okay. So I just really want to cover those corners now. It's not moving that far, so I know that a lot of a lot of the paint or enough paint has probably come off. And as I'm running out of time, I haven't got too much time to get too precious about it. Um, so I'd like to bring it this way a little more so you can see there's some air bubbles but hopefully you can also see that those those cells have held up pretty well let's just bring the pattern across a wee bit more and stretch those cells out so on the stretchability front that's that's not bad Have one more spin. 
yeah I'm going to revise that slightly I, I do think that has made that has made a little bit of a difference with that varnish the um, the cells do look more defined maybe do a little bit of modification and then I'm going to leave that here so I'm not being I haven't thought about the composition really or anything like that I'm just okay let me hold that up for you so I will take a photograph when it's dry or well, when it's dried for at least 24 hours which will be tomorrow because I want to get this video up as quickly as I can this week but yeah so that's the finished piece. Hopefully you can see it despite the glare from the overhead lights. And apologies for the rushed video, but it was that or nothing. <laughs> so hopefully that's answered some of the questions. As far as I can see at the moment, the cells have hold, held together pretty well. Obviously I'll know more once it's had time to settle down a bit. Some of my cells in the middle have gone a bit wobbly, but that's because where I've, I've, I've over, over, over tilted it um, in, in my hurry. But yeah, so my verdict at the moment is that definitely the Johnson's varnish isn't I wouldn't say is an essential add-on, but it does seem to have stabilised the cells slightly, and I hope that's been useful. Hey everyone, so this is just over 24 hours later. The piece is still slightly wet. I can see in the middle, it's still looking a bit damp, but it's not gonna shift much more than that now. So if I bring you in for a close up, you can see all the cells and lacing have actually held up really, really well. It's a bit constantinaed in the middle, some of the cells, but that's due to my technique because I did this so quickly and I just over tilted it a bit. So I'm not concerned about that. I don't like all the white spots. And that is actually caused by my pillow rather than the no nonsense and the Johnston varnishes. So I think I can remedy that with a with a different pillow. So I'm not too worried about that. But overall, I would say that's been quite a success. It's definitely a great budget option. I know that people have been having success with the Dulux trade quick dry gloss extra deep as a pouring medium but that's eye-wateringly expensive and this certainly would work on smaller pieces i don't know about the scalability as yet because i haven't i haven't experimented with that i'll do that in the future so just before i go i would like to say that the blooms are an advanced technique and the operative word being technique so much of it is down to you know you getting the you nailing the techniques so if you are a beginner or you haven't been pouring that long i do have an online pouring course and i will link to that in the comments below you can go and check that out it's really comprehensive 70 videos and chris schneider and julie vatcher are kind of co-tutors with with me on that so go and check that out and that's it for now i hope this has helped